lecture in Marseille has shown me a place whose gastronomy revels in its connection to the sea. Even its signature biscuits are shaped like boats, apparently. So it should come as no surprise that the city's most famous dish should be about fish, fish and more fish. It's called bouillabaisse, a kind of hearty fish stew. Everyone has their own way of cooking it. And here's Marseille's Clément Renault, head chef at Chef Fonfon, to show us how he does it. So we have the rascas, chobo, granulets, river fish, and the kumbaya. See, I told you it was a lot of fish, but there's veg too. We have some fennel, dry and fresh, garlic, and onions. That's it. I told you spice mix, you know, saffron, paprika, and piment. Some salt and some tomato. That's it. First, a little olive oil goes into the pan, then the fennel and the garlic. Give it a stir, chef. That's it. Then in go the spices, the salt, some salt, and the tomato. These ingredients are the base of the rich soup at the heart of this dish. And now after adding plenty of water, it's time to get the fish into stew. Looks great. Now, when's it ready, chef? You just have to cook it during five hours before serving. Five hours? Well, what's a few hours more for a dish that's been part of Marseille heritage for centuries? An old fisherman's favorite that was stewed up by their wives using leftover fish. It's now into the realms of fine dining, but it's still a cherished part of Marseille life. It's a part of, of my family, it's a part of Marseille, it's a bouillabaisse. But what makes it really special is that it's a two course meal in itself. You've got a broth for your first course, and then the fish and potatoes to follow. Bouillabaisse is Marseille's most famous dish. It uses everything from the local surrounding area, from the land and the sea, and dotted around the Royal Port, are restaurants all claiming to have one of the best. And here's my favorite place to have it, Le Miramar. And the old bouillabaisse is going down really well with these lot, so let's get stuck in. It even comes with its own instructions. Very simply, you've got the crostini, a bit of garlic, some of the aioli, the saffron garlic mayonnaise, and then just dunk it in the soup. Delicious. See, the key to a good bouillabaisse is balance. Balance of flavour. The right amount of fennel seed, but most of all the right fish. But it's this restaurant right here that I think serves one of the best. Because not only does it taste amazing, but while you're eating it, you can see where it comes from. You see, delicious. Now my director thinks that it's just this. It's actually not. It's this, and all the fish, and all the potatoes. So I'll have another bottle of wine, and I'll see you in three hours. The truth is, they usually serve bouillabaisse to share. <sighs> not this time. Right, next up, I've got a Marseille-inspired idea that's perfect for sharing with friends. dish now using wreck fish with a bisque. This is kind of like the shellfish equivalent to bouillabaisse using the leftover bits of lobster, crab, crayfish, longestines, whatever you want. There's so much flavour still in there and I'm going to show you how much flavour in, in a second. But the first thing we're going to do, grab our shot. This is a great way to use leftover shells and there's so much flavour still in the shells as well. A little bit of fennel, Fennel is a wonderful sort of edge that goes great in fish soups. A little bit of butter in the pan. We'll start to sweat down the shallot and the fennel. 
Now we can add a touch of tomato puree. This adds a nice bit of flavour and colour to this. And then I think the secret ingredient is a bit of armagnac or brandy. Just a touch. And what you want to do is flame off the alcohol. Because you want the flavour of the armagnac or brandy, or cognac, it's entirely up to you what you put in. And then we can add some stock. And then this is the unusual bit. You grab the shells. All these shells. Throw them in. A little bit of parsley. Some double cream. Now we bring this to the boil. Gently simmer this for about 10-15 minutes. Meanwhile, we can cook this stuff. This is buckwheat. It's produced in the Himalayas and around India. It's a fantastic ingredient to use this. And what you need to do is just get a pan of boiling water, throw it in. This is going to take about 5-10 minutes to cook. That's all. In the meantime, we can concentrate on our bisque. You see, this is one of the great things about cooking. With a team. That's what it is, a team. Part of the team is most of them don't believe me when I'm trying to explain what this dish is. And they didn't believe me you could make a sauce out of the shells. Well, I'm going to prove them wrong. Because what you do is you take a machine, quite a strong machine, and you chuck the whole lot into your machine. Shells, everything. Then we stick the lid on, switch it on, and hold on to your machine. If you don't hold on to it, you and the machine will be outside. <laughs> now, for our soup. The bit that they didn't believe me, what you end up with, is a pot of loveliness. Make sure you pass it through a sieve. Bits of shell in between your teeth are not good. You just get a beautiful soup out of it. And remember, this is just from the shells. You can see in here, look. Just get this delicious sauce. It's wonderful. Now, I'm going to finish that off in a minute. But now, it's all about the fish that we're going to serve it with. Check this fella out. Look at that. It's called a wreck fish. I love this fish. It's often confused as like a poor man's sea bass, but that wouldn't be doing it justice because it's absolutely beautiful. You can see this I've got here. Slightly, I think, meatier than sea bass, but the texture and the flavour is kind of similar to red mullet. What you can do is just cut it. So what we're going to do is we're going to cook this quite simply, a little bit of oil and a touch of butter. And we're going to pan fry this. First of all, whenever you pan fry in fish like mullet or sea bass, what you have to do is put quite a low heat to start off with and then hold it. Because what will happen if you don't hold it, it'll curl up. Black pepper. And now you can start to crank up the heat a little bit. And we're going to grab another pan. I don't normally use this many pans, to be brutally honest with you, and it's probably confusing to our producer, but I like to test them now and then. To, you know, keep them on the toes. So we're going to boil up our samphire. So this stuff is called sea asparagus. It's wonderful stuff. You get it in two types. You get it either fresh like this or pickled in jars, which is revolting. Go for this stuff. It's much nicer. Right, now with your fish. You can see it's not curling now. It's just cooking away nicely. And you can see the fish cook halfway up the side. Now, as it's cooking halfway up the side, we can then tell... When's the right time to turn it over? So just at this moment in time, you can see it cooking halfway up the piece of fish like that. Now we turn it over. Drain off our samphire now. It is delicious stuff, this, you know. Really is. Slightly salty. It's just wonderful stuff. So we lift off our bit of fish. And we need to leave it to rest. Right, we're going to finish this off now, is we'll then grab a little bit of butter. And what we're going to do is create like a beurre noisette to go with our buckwheat. 
So for that, we brown it off into our pan. Now while that's happening, we can grab a little bit of parsley that's left over. The colour is really, really important. That's what gives it its flavour. And it's what's going to give this its flavour as well. So we can throw in our buckwheat. At the same time, a little bit of lemon. Squeeze in there. Black pepper. The pass is going in. In we go with the samphire. In we go with a bit of lobster. You can use crab, you can use prawns. A bit more lemon juice. And then we'll just saute this lot together. You can see it goes sort of this nutty sort of texture to it, which is brilliant. That's exactly what we want. And then basically we can serve it really. It's as easy as that. Pour this on the top. Look at that, it's just good enough to eat as it is. And then of course you've got your fish. But then, not forgetting, we've made our sauce. And it is a sauce. If you want to put a few croutons in, you can call this a soup. But generally it's a sauce. We'll have a little taste. You won't believe how much flavour comes out of just a few lobster shells. Heat this up. Do you know what? Just needs a tiny little bit of butter. And then we put some of this wonderful sauce with it as well. You see, there you have it. It's a bit chefy for me, that. But you've got to admit, it's pretty impressive.